everybody. I'm Connie Stewart with SimplySimpleStamping.com. Welcome to today's Tuesday Tip Masterclass. During the month of January 2021, I've been sharing some different techniques and just racking my brain for every idea that I can come up with. Today, we're going to be focusing on white craft ink, also known as pigment ink. I'm going to share with you some fun and unique ways that you can use this very, very pretty uh, ink in some very fun ways. So I'm excited to share with you how to use your white craft ink. Let's get started. All right. Are you guys ready to learn about all the different ways you can use your Whisper White craft pad? Let's talk a little bit about the pad itself. So Craft ink, that is the Stampin' Up! term. It's also known as pigment ink, a phrase you might be more familiar with. Now, pigment ink is very different than a standard Stampin' Up! ink pad. First of all, you're going to see when you get your Whisper White craft pad, it's going to arrive to you uninked. But not to worry, it comes with the ink refill that you need. So this ink inside this refill is super thick, really, really thick. So when you get it, you're going to want to shake it up really good. Can you see? Let me just squeeze some of that out. Do you see? It's a very thick ink. So we're going to cover this pad the very first time you do it. It's going to take you a few times to keep adding this ink. And you're going to be very glad you have the ink refill because it is a thick ink. So you do go through it a little bit quickly. Now, that's kind of a mess, right? I'm going to take a plastic spoon, and I actually keep these little plastic spoons in my stamp room anytime I need to spread ink out on an ink pad. But here on the white craft pad, it, it goes on, like I said, it goes on really thick, and we're just going to want to make sure we spread it around. We want to make sure we have really good coverage, and you're easily going to be able to see that. When you're good and happy with it, I'm just going to take that and rinse that under the sink. So now that we've got our craft, our white craft pad uh, inked, it's ready to go. Let's talk a little bit about this pad. Now, as I said, it is a nice thick ink. And what that means is that ink stays thick and wet enough that you can top it with embossing powder. And when you do embossing powder, I'm going to go ahead and bring in one of the samples I'll be using later. It kind of creates a nice, I don't know if you can see it there, a nice shiny image. Um, it's very touchable. Uh, it's raised. And this is going to allow me to do all kinds of great things. But this can't wipe off. No matter what, this is not going to wipe off. I love the look of an embossed image. And that's just one of the things that you can do with the craft pad. We're going to be going over a lot of different techniques today. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about how to heat emboss with this ink pad. Now, White ink, pigment ink can be very messy. So you're going to want something underneath you, something to protect your table. All right, I'm going to be using some basic black cardstock because I think it's such a dramatic way to show you what the white craft pad is going to look like. Now, one thing I always recommend is that you prep the surface because this, if I've got oils and maybe hand lotion, if I've touched my face, anything that I could leave anything behind on this cardstock, obviously you're seeing me touch it a lot. We want to make sure that we have a, uh, a very clean surface that no embossing powder can stick to. You can use a used dryer sheet and you can wipe it down with a used dryer sheet. That's going to make it very anti-static. Now, Stampin' Up! used to carry a little thing called an embossing buddy. Maybe many of you still have yours. Uh, I hope you do. It's a great little tool. Um, I wish I could tell you what's inside. I think it's maybe uh, cornstarch or something. I've heard all kinds of things. But you're just going to want to make sure you've prepped your surface with either uh, the embossing buddy or um, a used dryer sheet. Either one of those is going to work great. So I'm going to take the stamp, You've Got This, and I'm going to ink it up on my white craft pad. And I'm going to flip it over. You want to make sure you've got really good coverage. But I want you to notice, do you see this right here? Yeah, I caught the edge a little bit. When you ink up on this ink pad, you want to keep a, just a light touch. By the way, it's kind of sticky. You're going to notice that. You're just going to tap it like you were kissing a bunny. And then that's going to make sure you're not getting the edges because if you were to press really hard, you'd have a big goopy mess on your hands. Now it happens, but we don't want that, right? All right, so I've got that well inked. It's ready to go. I'm going to stamp that on my cardstock. Make sure I give that a really good press. 
And now we're ready to sprinkle that with some embossing powder. Now you can either use a clear embossing powder because remember this is white or you can use a white embossing powder, whichever one you prefer, they're both going to work great. I'm gonna go ahead and use the white, but really it does not matter which one. You notice we're just gonna sprinkle that until we've covered the entire image. We're gonna give that a little tap. Now I'm gonna give it a little flick. I wanna get all that excess off. Should you find what I like to call embossing boogers, if you find that any strays are trying to hang around, I keep a little, just a little paintbrush and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. But that way, if you see anything like that right there, we can just brush that away. Now, before I do anything, I gotta clean this up because if I leave this here, I've got a problem. I told you, embossing powder and white cards or white uh, ink can get a little messy. So I'm just gonna brush that back into the bottle. You want to make sure you cleaned up all that embossing powder before you bring in your heat tool because we don't want that uh, powder to go blowing all over the place. All right, time to bring in the heat gun and we're gonna heat set this. All right, so this is a Stampin' Up! heat tool, also known as a heat gun. Um, I do have people ask me from time to time, can I just use my blow dryer? Will that get hot enough that I can melt the embossing powder? And let me tell you, it fortunately is not going to work because a blow dryer was going to want to blow a lot of air. This has a very low flow of air, but a lot of heat. So that's why you really do need to use an actual heat gun. Now, before I heat set this, I want to preheat my heat gun. About 30 to 45 seconds of just letting it run uh, will get it uh, nice and hot and ready to um, uh, melt my embossing powder. So let's go ahead. We'll turn that on and let it run. All right, I've let that heat up. It's good and ready to go. Uh, I do wanna give you a quick demonstration on heat embossing. Um, you're gonna want to uh, move your heat tool back and forth, back and forth. I've got about maybe four inches between the heat tool and my card stock. Be careful of whatever surface you're working on too. We don't wanna burn the house down, all right guys? So we're gonna heat this. We're gonna go back and forth, keeping it about three or four inches away. Some people actually like to heat it from the back side. Some people also do the front and the back. Again, the reason they like to do this is it makes sure that your cardstock doesn't start to get hot and warp. So you can kind of go back and forth between the two. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn this back on and we're gonna melt that embossing powder and you can watch this magic happen. You'll know that your heat setting is done when you see it kind of go from a dull to a shiny. I hope that you guys can see there's a lot of great shine going on there. So that's your basics of using the white craft pad to just get some really nice white embossed images and sentiments. Love it for that. Hey, while I've got this out, I'm gonna go ahead and step into my next technique and that's called the chalkboard technique. So here's a card that I did using this chalkboard technique. Can you see it kind of looks like a chalkboard there? And the only way you can really achieve this is with the Whisper White craft pad. So let me show you how that's gonna be done. I am going to come in with a sponge dauber and this sponge dauber is dedicated to my white ink. I don't wanna use anything. I don't wanna use that on anything else. Okay, I'm gonna tap it just here on the corner and I am gonna tell you that first tap is really strong. In fact, I'm just gonna flip this over so you can see that's really bold. For this chalkboard technique, I want it to be more softer. So I am really taking off a lot of that ink. And hey, I figure why not do it on the back? No one's gonna see it. Now I'm gonna come along and I'm just gonna swirl this ink here on the edges. And you see how it's kind of giving a look of a recently erased chalkboard. We can add that all the way around. You notice I'm not re-inking this at all because it just does not take a lot of ink. I always like to say less is more. I can add more if I need it, but I can't take it away. So I'm going to give this a really good hard press, get some of that off of there. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to kind of dull down that black cardstock. And now there you're kind of getting the idea of the chalkboard looks. So let me bring that card back in. 
that's what it looks like when it's all done. And now I can use this, you've got this, on a great card. So I've got an idea ready for me with that one. All right, so I just taught you a technique of using the white craft pad to sponge on some color. Now we're gonna go the other direction. I'm going to sponge on with magenta madness on magenta madness paper. You can see, you've, you can see I've already done my heat embossing. I stamped, I put on my embossing powder. Again, whoops, I almost used that white sponge dauber. That would have been really bad. I'm gonna use one that's dedicated to my magenta. But that has been sprinkled. You can do it with either the clear or the white embossing powder. And it's melted, it's all ready to go. There's my sponge dauber. Again, like I like to say, I just always ink it up in a corner. It's just kind of habit there. Just like you saw me do, I want to sponge off a little bit because I don't want it to be quite so dark. And watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to sponge right over this word. And do you see how I started in the middle and I kept getting bigger and bigger? And we'll just kind of keep adding and stretching that out as much as we can. And I'm going to ink that up again, tap off again, starting in the middle, work my way out. Now, if you'll give me just a minute, I'm going to repeat that here on the corners. All right, so that's all been sponged, but you see how my white ink turned pink. Now, that is a great look. It really is. But I'm going to bring in a microfiber cloth, and I'm going to buff that ink right off of there. Oh, my goodness. I love Oh, I love, no pun intended, um, I love buffing off that ink and allowing that white to just pop. And on that magenta, it's absolutely beautiful. You can see here on my microfiber cloth, the ink that's coming off. And so this is a dedicated cloth to my stamp room. So we can hit all four corners. And now I've got a really fun focal image. This is ready to add to a card but I've got a super wow, fabulous, poppable image ready to go. Here is a technique I absolutely love. I have dry embossed a piece of cardstock. This is Blushing Bride. And you guys might recognize this one because I taught this in my dry embossing masterclass that I did earlier in the month. I'm gonna come back in with that Whisper White uh, sponge dauber. Remember how I just taught you how to ink it up? and brush it off a little bit here on the corner. Now I've done some of this for you, but what I'm going to do is I'm very lightly, and you wanna keep this very light, I'm sponging that ink on to this embossed image. Do you see how it's only picking up right on that raised image? Now if I press too hard, it's gonna get down on every groove, and we don't want that. But boy, I love the look of this white popping off of that dry embossed image. Now, I'm gonna take this up a notch, are you ready? I'm gonna go a little crazy and I'm gonna do that on this other half. You can take your ink pad, here we go, and I am just like you were kissing a baby, kissing a bunny, whatever your favorite animal or human is, and I'm just tapping that here, and do you see now it's just picking up just little bits. Such a pretty look. So you've got a couple different options of using your white uh, craft pad here with dry embossed cardstock. So I'm curious, which do you love best? Do you love it sponged on nice and soft? Or do you love this where that white really pops and uh, hits those edges really sharp? I want to bring in, um, this one's been finished. This is what happens, oh, I guess I probably tapped and tapped a little too hard because I got down on every groove. But what I did here is I then sprinkled it. Uh, let's see, it looks like I think I did Whisper White. I did white uh, embossing powder on that one. But it's a very different look. And so you do have many different looks that you could achieve with a dry embossed piece of cardstock, right? Love those. How about using our Whisper White craft pad to color an image? This is absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna show you how you can do that. I stamped my image on some soft suede cardstock and I stamped it in the Whisper White craft. And again, remember you can sprinkle with either the white or the clear embossing powder. So we're gonna sprinkle that on and heat set it, which you've seen me do. Now to get this technique, I'm gonna take a clear block and I'm gonna ink it up. Can you see I've kind of made myself just a little 
baby ink pad. And I have got a blender pen. Uh, you may have seen these and I'm just gonna pick up that ink there on my blender pen. It's pretty thick on there right now. So I'm gonna start here on the, the uh, middle of my image. And then I'm just gonna kind of trace around and I know I've already got ink on here, so I'm kind of doing it twice, but that's okay. It's gonna give me a different look. So you can see, I can just kind of keep picking up this ink and I'm just kind of tracing around my dry, or I'm sorry, forgive me, my heat embossed areas. So once you have that done, then we can come back in and we can start to color in. Now, I guess you don't really have to trace. I think the reason I do is because I like that to be the deepest, darkest part of my image. And uh, yeah, so you can see how we can just take that and we can color that in. That's really pretty. Now I'm gonna take this uh, technique up one notch for you. So here you can see I have stamped and embossed and I did that in uh, early espresso. Now, again, if you wanna learn this uh, little technique, how I was able to heat emboss in espresso ink, you're gonna wanna go back and watch the video on heat embossing that's part of my series. Now, I colored it in, as you've already seen, I just colored that in with my Whisper White uh, craft pad. I did that there again with my blender pen. And since I was using my Magenta Madness earlier, we'll come back in with that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create myself a little ink pad again, just like you saw me do. So I'm just gonna tap that clear block onto an ink pad. Now I have a palette. I've got my blender pen here. Let's load it up with some of that magenta ink and watch what happens. By the way, I should mention, I had to let this dry for a while, okay? If that white ink was still wet, I'd kind of have a muddy mess. So if you do this technique, you're gonna wanna just let it dry. You can even come in with your heat tool and uh, give that just a little uh, heat to kind of help it dry as quickly as you can, but you want it good and dry. And look at that, look at how I'm able to get that gorgeous bright magenta on that So Saffron cardstock, so pretty. But it's because I have that white behind me. So let me show you, this is what it looks like otherwise. And not that it's bad, but do you see, it kind of goes a little dull, it's a little bit darker. Look how nice and bright it stays when I do it over the white. So yeah, this is another great technique of how you can now color using that Whisper White craft pad. And you know what, let me bring in a finished card that I did using that technique. I think it looks so pretty, please ignore my little boo-boo right there. But yeah, you see how nice and vibrant that is. And then I came in with the granny apple green and I finished that out and oh look, there's my happy birthday. And I did that just like you saw me do on this card here. I just used the white, a uh, craft pad and um, white or clear embossing powder for my happy birthday. So a simple, quick little note card. You're going to want to clean that um, blender pen when you're done. And you can see, I just keep rubbing until it goes clean. That's when I know I'm good to go in my next color. Now, yes, magenta was an awfully bold color. So it might take me eh, just a little bit. You can see it's getting lighter. When that is good and clear, I'm good to go. And you remember I did that with the white, same thing. I realize it's hard to see. Look, I can come here on the Stamp It Up logo. Yep, I can see it's all cleaned off. So my blender pens are ready to use again. All right, another technique, and that is stamping and embossing on vellum. Love vellum. Now guys, this I did with the uh, Peaceful Poppies, and I just did the exact same technique using either the embossing buddy, or the dryer sheet, whichever one, but you wanna make sure that vellum is good and um, resistant of anything that might wanna stick. You've already seen the technique. I stamped in the white craft pad, sprinkle it with the clear or white embossing powder. But the technique I wanted to show you is how I can add that nice soft color underneath. So I'm gonna flip this over. Not so pretty on the other side, is it? No, it is not. The good news is it's real pretty on the other side. I've got a flirty flamingo dark is what I'm using. And I'm just coloring and you notice I'm going way outside the lines because I kind of want that look. The nice thing about this stamp set in particular is it's supposed to kind of look like watercolor. 
And it's very quick and easy. You're just gonna color right over. And you see here, I just filled in, and I believe I did that with the granny apple green. And here, this nice little mess, uh, this was my misty moonlight. But when you flip it over, hmm, it's awfully pretty. Let me put that behind some white cardstock so that you can see. A really, really pretty look. I love the look of vellum, but I especially love the look of vellum that has been embossed. All right, let's move on to another technique. I thought this technique was absolutely gorgeous. Now, I saw this on a fellow demonstrator's website. I believe her name was Gail Ellis, and I thought this was just gorgeous. So this is going to be great for all you people who are fans of vintage, that sepia tone. This is, and this was a fun technique. Are you ready? Let's go ahead and learn how to do this. So this stamp set is Corner Bouquet, and that is a celebration freebie right now. I'm going to come in with an early espresso ink pad. And what's cool with this is we're going to stamp in a color, and then we're going to stamp in white. So I'm going to ink up this corner, make sure it's good and inked. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip this over. So we're going to do this in each corner. So I'm going to stamp. And I'm going to kind of bring it up. Let me lay it down so you can see. I'm kind of away from the edge of the cardstock. I'm going to stamp that. Now I'm going to give it a really good twist, but I'm not going to re-ink it so that I get that lighter look. Okay. Now I still have some early espresso ink on here, and we need to make sure that's good and gone. So I'm going to come in with my chamois. I want to make sure it's good and clean. Hey, I've got my chamois here. Let me show you. Do you see my white craft ink that's all over the back? That's what I use to clean off my white craft. I use the back of my chamois. So that way I don't ever have to run the risk of getting white craft ink on as I'm trying to clean a stamp. So yeah, I do my white on one side and my color on another. Little extra tip for you. All right, now I have stamped that. And you remember I've taught you how you can emboss in colors. That might still be wet. I can't let it be wet. It just absolutely cannot. I'm just going to give it a little rub. Again, you can use the dryer sheet, embossing butter, buddy, whichever one you need. But we are going to emboss, so we might as well uh, kind of prep the surface. And that's also going to ensure no ink. No ink at all is going to my white um, craft ink and my embossing powder is not going to stick to that. We do not want that. All right, so now we can come back in with our white craft pad. Let's ink that up and make sure we get that good coverage. Remember, we tap it really light, but we want to check. Always check. You want to make sure you've got really good coverage. Now, when I go to stamp this in the white, you remember I kind of came up and off the cardstock, uh, kind of came inward. This one, I'm going to kind of just barely go off the cardstock. There we go. That's not very pretty. Now, I will tell you with this technique in particular, I highly recommend the white um, embossing powder. And the reason why, we've got that dark color going on behind us. And we need to make sure that we get really good full coverage. By the way, there you're seeing my sample. So we're going to tap that off. Let's pour it back into the jar. And now we're going to come along and heat set that. Beautiful, right? Now I want to teach you how I created this sepia look. You're going to love this. This is a brand new tool from Stampin' Up. These are our blending brushes. Guys, I really, I thought these were going to be sponges, and they are the teeniest, tiniest little and softest bristles ever. I mean, I kind of want to just sit there and play with them. I love them. Uh, you are going to get messy because we're going to be going off the cardstock, so I'm going to bring that grid paper in. I'm coming back in with that early espresso. Now, I'm going to just add some ink here to my blending brush. Tap just to make sure you're good, but that's not very dark, so I'm good with that. And guys, I'm simply going to blend. You just saw me do this with a sponge dauber. And by the way, you could do this with a sponge dauber too, so don't think you can't, but I got to tell you, these blending brushes are so soft, and they just give a really nice look. So by the way, that technique that you saw me do with the sponge dauber, you could do with this as well. So blend, 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 swirl, swirl, swirl. You notice what we're doing down here? Yep, it's getting that look we don't like, but don't worry because we're gonna be able to buff that off. 
All right, I have that on there. Now we've got some speckles. Do you see my speckles? I love speckles. But for speckles, we're gonna need a big piece of, of grid paper because this one can get messy. Trust me, it's worth it though. All right, so there is my early espresso ink pad just like you've seen me do before i'm going to make myself a little makeshift ink pad and i'm going to come in with my water brushes now these come in three sizes i'm going to use the largest one for this technique so you can fill your water brush with either water or rubbing alcohol whichever one so what i'm going to do with this and you know what i think i'm going to bring in that microfiber cloth since it's here there's a little button or not a button but a little spot here on my uh, water brush that says push we're going to push that until we start to get something coming out of it and we are it's coming out nice and wet that's what we want now i'm gonna keep squeezing because i really want this as wet as i can can you see oh yeah that's what we want good sloppy and wet all right, there's my ink, and are you ready? We're just gonna go tap, tap, and we're done. And we have those gorgeous speckles on our cardstock. Again, perfect for that really vintage look. I'm gonna come back in with that microfiber cloth. And you know what, I keep saying microfiber. Guys, I think you could probably accomplish this with just a paper towel or something too. But uh, this is kind of a staple in my stamp room. I use it, well, I, I occasionally dust. <laughs> I'll use that term loosely. Uh, yeah, you know, sometimes you do have to kind of clean your stamp space. So I can just buff that off. And you see, I've got a really gorgeous focal image. I'm going to put a nice vintagey sentiment right there. I love it. And I love those speckles. So a shout out to Gail for teaching me that incredible technique. All right, one more technique, and that is the bokeh technique. Heavens, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, because that's kind of a new one to me. I'm going to be doing that using my layering circles dies. And I don't want to make these too big, so I think I'm going to stick uh, with the the three smallest ones. I've got a piece of vellum. Uh, I just cut it uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. So a standard quarter sheet of cardstock. So uh, just, I'm gonna bring in my die cutting machine. So to do this technique, base plate one and two on top of each other, then three, then our vellum. Now we'll add those circle dies. Remember, we want to kind of keep those spread apart so we can work with them. And another cutting plate three. Let's run this through the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And there we go, bad Swiss cheese, but it's going to make for a great technique. I have a piece of four by five and a quarter inch cardstock, and I'm going to bring in three ink pads. I have Blushing Bride. Calypso Coral and Flirty Flamingo. And I've got a clear block and I'm gonna dip that into my uh, Blushing Bride ink. Like I said, I wanna start with my lightest color first. And I'm doing this because I wanna stick to just one sponge dauber for this technique. So I'm gonna ink up my sponge dauber. I'm gonna tap off like I like to do. And I'm gonna make a circle. Make ourselves a pretty little circle. And by the way, what I kind of like about this technique too is if I were to, oh, like I've got a little dark spot there. Well, guess what? I'm gonna be able to cover that up here in a minute. So tap off and let me make another circle. This one's just a little bit darker, but that's okay because what we're going for with this technique are some different tones of these three colors. And by the way, you could do this with just two colors if you wanted. Um, you could do it even with just one, just keeping some lighter and some darker. So there's my Blushing Bride. Next, I'm going to go into my Flirty Flamingo. So I'm going to give this clear block a quick swipe with my, uh, my chamois to clean it. And now I can ink that up. And see, that's why I said I'm not worried about this one sponge dauber now because I'm just kind of reusing it over and over again. When I'm done, I can just rinse this underwater, kind of make it good to go again. So we'll add some more color. So I'm going to go ahead and do what you just saw me do. I'm going to do it again. And then our last color, Calypso Coral. Again, there is my palette. And now we can kind of come in 
and add these gorgeous deep orange tones. Now with this last color, I'm just kind of filling in anything else that kind of still has some white on it. And then we're gonna come in with our white craft ink and we're gonna make some magic. So stick with me as we do the bokeh technique. All right, you remember that white sponge dauber? Yep, we're gonna bring that one back in. Our white craft pad and our Swiss cheese. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna lay that down and it's gonna be a stencil for me. So we're gonna ink up our sponge dauber, hold that stencil in place, and we're gonna go right over that color. Let me pull this away so you can see. Ah, yeah, pretty gorgeous, right? Now let me do this again. Make sure, in fact, you know what? I think it's probably a good idea that I mark this because I don't want to run the risk of putting that white and letting it be, you know, there on the other side. So I'm just going to mark that, that it's my bouquet, boca. I know, guys, I don't know. There's a lot of different uh, ways people pronounce it. I'm going to take this small one and I'm going to come just right off of that one just a little bit. We'll add... A little color there. By the way, this technique really goes good and fast. So I'll lay that right there on the edge. Give me just a second. I'm going to keep adding some of this. I'm obviously not going to cover the card. Now, if you've got some circles that you feel are a little on the light side, just put your stencil right back over it. And look what I'm going to do. I'm going to tap and really press that white ink down. And look, now it's got a nice pop. Now you want the transition from the lights and the darks. So have some fun with it. But I got to tell you guys, this technique, it's kind of addicting. And uh, you just want to kind of keep playing with different color combinations. But ooh, creating with that white ink. What an incredible look. I cannot wait to add that to a card. Now remember to clean your stencil. Remember I told you how I use the back side of my chamois. I'm just going to very gently, okay, you don't want to rip this or anything. It is vellum cardstock, so it is pretty tough stuff. Uh, you could also do this with a window sheet, and that would work really well, too. So whichever one, but you know, I thought we were working with vellum earlier, so I thought I'd go ahead and use it with vellum, but either one. Now I can go, let's let that dry, and then I'm going to be ready to do that with another card. And there you go, my friends. I hope that you learn a few new ideas on how to use your white craft ink. Now, if you don't have that particular ink, head over to simplysimplestamping.com. You can order it right there from my website. I think you're going to really enjoy having uh, this ink. Hey, don't forget to add those sponge daubers um, to your order as well, because I think you're going to really enjoy having those on hand as well. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I hope that you're enjoying the Masterclass series. I look forward to stamping with you guys soon. So have a great day. Bye-bye.